Okie dokie. So let's um let's go to Wikipedia and grab some uh, public domain or CC images. And ooh, that's a very very high res image. So let's take that and size this down. Oh, still too big for my purpose. Okay, that that'll do. And take it right there. And begin. Good. Okay, so first things first, the most important thing I need to deal with is shape. So let me uh, get out my uh, cutter. Thing. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just using this simple cutting tool, talking to my computer with the voice recognition stuff. Sorry, I can't really find a way to um to route the audio so that the computer only hears it rather than you also hearing it as well. But uh, a bit of a drawback. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, you know, make a decent silhouette for this pair of scissors that, you know, resembles that pair of scissors just by the silhouette alone. And you'll notice that I'm not really caring about the, um, about all the little holes and stuff. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just focusing on, you know, the overall shape, which looks uh, <clears throat> like something... Looks a little dirty, but anyway, you know, can't let that stop you from painting. There we go. And then I got to cut out this little thing here. And let's see what else. Now, you'll notice what I just did, right? As I just went and I cut straight through. I know there are little things like bumps here, but what you don't do is you don't draw and then do a bump and then draw. Just go straight through, add the bump in afterwards. You know, wind up with smoother results. Yeah, that looks reasonable. It's a reasonable facsimile. Okay. A little fat on this end. Bring that down. There we go. No, the audio hasn't cut out. I've just, like I say, it's just a very, I wouldn't say tedious process. Um, it's a methodical process, but right now all I care about is shape. And it's, it's a tough job. 
even for something as simple as this little pair of scissors. I mean, if you want to get it with any accuracy, you just, you got to concentrate. And I got to concentrate. In particular, the things that I'm looking at are the various thicknesses of the, um, the scissors as I'm cutting through it. That seems reasonable. You know, I will look at the entire width of that as well. Some things down here feel kind of dodgy. I guess that's, it looks pretty close. It's definitely not perfect. Um, the only way I will be able to really refine this any further is when I start adding shapes within this one big shape. So I'm going to lock the transparency now and begin dividing up this one big silhouette into smaller silhouettes. And now you see why I spend so much time on trying to get a good silhouette. Because you know, I barely did anything. I just went and laid these few shapes down and it's already starting to look more like a pair of scissors. In fact, this little button, I'm going to get rid of that button in a second. I need this other dark shape here. There we go. Boom. And now I can actually see where things went wrong because I have this extra, this other large shape right here. Okay. So I can unlock the transparency and now I can resolve that, that problem. Okay. And then I think this also needs to be trimmed. That goes away there. I relock the transparency, grab this color. There. It, that's the little change I just put in. Right? I'm isolating all the planes. In fact, I should probably make it carry up to the top like that. There, now we have an entire plane, like so. See? I got this little dark bit there and those little dark bits, so. 
And also I have to make some things match up, so I'm going to just fix that up now. It's like if you can see a part in the shape that you can fix, you know, you fix them as soon as you can. Because everything relies on the shape. The shape's wrong, and you start painting over bad shapes, nothing's going to help you later. Oh, I better fix up that other bad shape. Bad shape. No, bad artist. Don't blame the shape. You made the shape. Blame the artist. That's better. Gotta take responsibility for your shortcomings. Now I'm just adding that little, this is a bottle opener that they put into the scissors. Okay, now I'm really spending too much time on these little funky details. Okay, I see more areas that shapes where I can correct shapes. So let me, uh, Let's keep that transparency locked for now. Okay. Now, if you look here, you'll see that there's a dark plane right here on the edge, so I set out to draw that right now. There. Correct that a bit. It's amazing. It's like I have not taken out my brush at all. All I've used so far is just shapes. So, you know, this just kind of speaks to the power of shape. You know, you got this kind of a white diagonal shape here, so how about I deal with that now? This is like working with vector. Let me zoom out. It's like, hey, this look it looks like it's like a it's it's there's a soft, you know, there's a soft transition there, but You know, that's what the brush will deal with later. Let's put that one in there. Let's get that big circular hinge. Not only that, I see an area that needs fixing this shape right here. That little hook got to be fixed up. Fix that up. Okay, now, you see the way that I left this line right here, right? I purposely did that so that when I put here, if I lock the transparency now, now you're going to see why I left that there. So that, there, there's, I've inscribed a plane right in there. Now I'm reshaping that very carefully. Okay. All carving, you know, you'll see that this, ironically, it's a pair of scissors, but, you know, you have to cut the form. Especially on a pair of scissors.
phone seems okay for now. Like, if an area doesn't quite seem right, sometimes what you gotta do is you gotta leave it alone um, and then start fiddling away with something else on a different area. And then you'll realize, you know, once you throw in that other thing, you'll realize what's wrong. And I can see a few things. Like right here, I see there's a dark kind of a edge right there. It's not black. It's pretty close, though. And there's things like specular highlights. So you know what? Maybe I should just go through and nail those specular highlights right now. Everything I've done so far is just shape. Oops. Gosh darn it. Adding the teeth for this little bottle opener. There. Okay. When will I take out the brush? <laughs> you see, it's like I don't want to take out the brush. I'm ha I'm I'm having a good old time with this shape cutting tool. It gives me plenty of accuracy. You know, it doesn't look painterly. Okay, but you know what? It gives me a ton of accuracy. It doesn't give me gradients. So that is to say that the brush. The one thing that a brush is good for is smoothing things down. It's good for getting you a variety of brush strokes. All right, fine. Let's take out the brush. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Enough, enough farting around. I'm going to take this gray. Let's smooth off this, this edge. Yeah, okay. So. In fact, how am I going to smooth it off is a good question. So. And then I'll take that white and okay. Now, what I did is I smooth, I smoothed the transition, and I did it with total disregard to. You know, I, I smoothed it off in with total disregard to where this edge here was. This leading edge. Let's see right here. This edge right along here. I went and I just said, Here you, Mr. Edge, I don't care about you. Because that edge is very easy to put back. Alright, so don't don't worry about, you know. Um, don't worry about having to redo strokes. If you're worried about having to redo strokes, then it's because you're afraid that you can't redo those strokes. I mean, <laughs> is your brush skill so bad that you can't redo a stroke? Come on. You know, I just, I say that because there are so many times when I've painted and I've avoided redoing a stroke and I wound up tiptoeing around it and the result was awful. Now you'll notice the way that I'm putting in these serrations is I'm... There we are. I'm subdividing. To get some amount of, you know, evenness in them. Now, I'll tell you, my scissors probably looks a lot more. Oh, they got to, if you look real carefully, okay, you got to look real carefully. You got to be on your toes for this kind of stuff. But you see that it's a curve. Then it, I'm going to exaggerate this, okay? You're going to see that there's a curve that goes in, a bump out, and then it curves again. It's not just straight. 
funny how they did that. Let's undo that subdivision because maybe I can. I th I think I can do a better job. Or maybe I'll just wing it. Okay, it's getting darker now. Yeah, close enough. Maker's mark. I'm just greeking that stuff in. Uh, let's lock the alpha channel. Move that down. There's a few little things I'm trying to get in here. Like that dark edge. Namely, this dark edge right here. It's not just a dark edge, it's actually a shadow. That's better. I smooth this whole thing off as well. little things to put on the bottle opener, little teeth, there's like little darkenings on that. And the scissors themselves, that's not a pure white there, that's actually a lot dimmer. All sorts of light gray stuff going on here. Okay, now you're going to run into a situation like this where you've got banding. See that? Banding occurs whenever you've got overlapping brush strokes. Like in here, there's some banding, you know, right here. Sorry. You got banding here, you got banding here. So what do you do about banding? Well, here's what you do. I'm going to grab this color right here. You got to use your eyedropper, grab. You know, you got to grab the color that that's causing the banding, and then just use it, and then you can you can get rid of the banding like that. No more banding. See you. Sayonara. Adios. Aloha. Arrivederci. Dobu bacenia. No more banding. And now I am seeing some shape problems as I do this. Like I say, the shape problems are going to start leaping out at you later on. So you get in there and you fix them. Lock the transparency again. Uh, unlock the transparency again. Found another shape problem. There's this curvature, this very subtle curvature. You see how many times I, I redid that stroke, eh? I'm like redoing it. It's like, and eh, no, it's still not quite right. And if I had to redo it that many times, I think there's something wrong. I think maybe it's because. That side's not wrong, it's the other side that's wrong. I mean, it's a combination of both. Okay, now I finally feel a little satisfied with that. Okay. So, 
Uh, let's fix this little bit up. I use the eyedropper. Fix the banding. Take the black. Reshape. Take that lighter color. Plaster it all in. Take the dark. Put that curve right in there. Let's unlock that. Yeah, I'm seeing more shape issues. So I'm fixing them now. I gotta do it now, not later. Shape issues are the most troublesome because they're the hardest to detect until later. So like you saw how careful I was earlier when I was painting. And yet now they're showing up because I'm putting shapes within shapes. There. Shape problems resolved. better. Let's unlock that transparency again. Spotting more shape problems. They're not like, you know, they're subtle changes, but still got to do something about them. thing about a study right you know it's just a little pair of scissors yes but you know let's let's paint the best goddamn pair of scissors I gotta take pride in being able to do a simple thing well. Can you handle it, knucklehead? <laughs> that's how I that's how I feel about myself. You know, whenever I send myself these simple problems, these simple tasks, just do a good job painting a pair of scissors. I say that to myself, you know, can you handle that knucklehead? I'm just trying not to screw it up. is taking everything I have not to screw up. But mind you, you know, I'll, I'll tell you this much, is that I've already made several mistakes throughout this thing. I have screwed up. And so, you know, it's also taking everything that I have to spot my screw-ups and fix them. That's the other thing. Very hard to be perfect. But, you know, I think the next best thing is being able to spot your mistakes and fix them. There we go. Well, that's looking much better. Now let's put that highlight back in because I kind of nuked it earlier. There we go. Yeah, baby, you like that. And now I'm putting shapes within shapes.
shapes within shapes that you can shape while you shape. Here we go. Another shape problem, right there, and fix that up. Oh yes, it is starting to look more like a more like a pair of scissors. Oh right. A lot of what I'm doing is just, um, I maybe only, I only pick colors now and then. A lot of the variety of colors that I get is dependent on how hard I'm pushing on the stylus. I push harder, I get, you know, a brighter color or a darker color. So, pressure control on the stylus. That's one thing I cannot show to you on camera because you can't show how hard you know, I cannot, I cannot show how hard I'm pushing on the stylus on camera. It is just, I mean, I guess I could hook up a pressure gauge, but I don't know. Eh. Meh. Meh. I don't want to. Cutter. Man. Something is eating up my CPU. Maybe I got a video compression going on in the background. It's not usually this bad while, well, on the other hand, when I'm recording something, that's probably why it's bad. Usually a lot more responsive when I'm not recording something. Cutter. That's better. That's another thing. You know what it is? It's that if I don't use the voice recognition in a while, it becomes slower and less responsive. I would like to bother Microsoft about that. Okay. Well, that looks like it's about right. Now let's lock the transparency. Let's get that top a little bit of that shape in there. I don't know, man. It looks pretty good to me. I mean, I guess I could go in there and put the whole thing on a white background. And then throw in a shadow. 
I mean, these are normally things that you do, you know, at the beginning of the drawing, but. But I was lazy. But the drawing hasn't suffered as a result, you know. It's There it is. So I'll zoom in and you can see my ugly brush strokes. You get to see how it's just how nasty this actually is. Oh, there's my maker's mark. Doodle, doodle, doodle. Maybe I'll take a little bit of light color and put in a few highlights on it to make it look like it's been engraved somewhat. Better. Same thing with this part here. A few dark spots to emboss it. And I'm just looking around and maybe it could do with a little bit of a scuffing up. Alpha lock. There we go. Lock the alpha channel down. Oops. And scuffing things out. At this point, the uh, drawing is more or less done. But I am just nitpicking. For my own pleasure. Because you know, man, details are important, man. You know, details. I love detail. Yeah, you can put in detail at the end. When you've done all the other homework. It's like doing this detail stuff, this is the reward you get for being careful in the beginning, for being diligent and patient. People love detail. But you know, when the shapes are screwed up, no one will notice your detail. Yeah. Well, once again, we zoom in real close and you can see my ugly, ugly brushwork. Okay, but zoomed out. Oh, wow, looks great. <laughs> Oops, let me unlock that. Oh, so I guess... Uh, I guess that's a wrap. All right. 